Welcome to the Relationship Diversity Podcast, where we celebrate, question, and explore all aspects of relationship structure diversity, from solaramory to monogamy to polyamory and everything in between, because every relationship is as unique as you are. We'll bust through societal programming to break open and dissect everything we thought we knew about relationships, to ask the challenging but transformational questions, who am I and what do I really want in my relationships? I'm your guide, Carrie Jaroslow, best-selling author, speaker, intuitive, and coach. Join me as we reimagine all that our most intimate relationships can become. Opening up a relationship can be scary. One of my clients, we'll call Lucy, came to me wanting to explore the possibility. She hadn't yet approached her husband of 10 years about it and wanted to talk it through with me before doing so. She had been doing her own inner exploration around relationships and sexuality for about a year and had come to some pretty big realizations. First, she realized that she had always had an interest in exploring more kinky sexual fantasies, including bondage. She had to be in control in so many aspects of her life that the idea of relinquishing control through this avenue was erotic. She had attempted at times to introduce this into her relationship with her husband, and he made it very clear that it wasn't really something he was interested in. She understood and wanted to honor him, but began to feel like she wasn't honoring her own desires. Lucy felt like the idea of opening up her relationship could help her do both, respect his feelings while exploring and fulfilling her desires. After we spent time going deep into her thoughts and feelings, we made a plan for her to talk openly with her husband. She was terrified, understandably, but she prepared herself by practicing how she would start the conversation and how she would explain what she wanted while staying in a space of curiosity, allowing him to express his thoughts. When she had the initial conversation, he met her in an unexpected place. He expressed feeling relieved at the idea because he knew he was keeping her from having that experience, yet he didn't want to partake in it. And surprisingly, he mentioned a curiosity about exploring sexually with another man, which both surprised and excited Lucy. This first conversation brought them closer, creating a more profound level of intimacy between them. As they continued the conversation over many months, her husband expressed fear around what it would mean if she found someone she was more sexually compatible with, and if it would lead to her wanting to be fully in relationship with that person. She had prepared herself for this question and expressed from a heartfelt place that she loved their relationship and didn't want to be with anyone else in that way. She agreed to continually communicate as the experience developed and, as hard as that might get, be compassionately honest. With my help, they talked openly about rules of engagement, and not from a place of restriction, but from a place of wanting to be clear and transparent about how to move into this new structure. They agreed to check in with each other on a regular basis about how it was really going. They talked about what they wanted to know and what they didn't want to know and how to best navigate the new landscape they were about to embark upon. It's now been almost three years and they're still together and still exploring sexual encounters outside of their main relationship. I have seen them both come alive as they're more allowed to become fuller versions of themselves. That doesn't mean that there hasn't been some big challenges and hurdles. And as much as they have agreed to come together in open communication, it hasn't always gone that way. When triggered, there have been some ugly moments from both of them, but their fulfillment has always been greater than the challenges, and they continue to feel that this is the best choice for them. Lucy and her husband's desire for sexual exploration in terms of kink or orientation are a couple reasons why someone would choose to open their relationship. Here are some other reasons. One is sexual libidos differ between the partners. So one is very sexual and one maybe not so much. 
Another reason is one partner identifies as asexual and the other has sexual desires. Opening up a relationship like this releases pressure from both sides of trying to make something happen that doesn't feel right to either. At the same time, it also honors and celebrates the parts of the relationship that are good. Another reason is knowing about some a partner's other sexual experiences is a turn on. Some people are really turned on by watching their partner with someone or knowing about their partner's other sexual experiences. And the last reason we'll talk about is that they want to evolve, play, and have fun sexually with others as a way of connecting more deeply in their primary relationship. We don't know what we don't know. Opening up a previously monogamous relationship can bring new levels of passion and excitement into a more established relationship. Typically in open relationships, there is an emotional boundary, an openness to having physical exploration, but not emotional exploration. And if an emotional connection begins to develop, there can be either a restructure or a decision to close the primary relationship. Now, I'm all about diversity within a structure as a way of expressing your uniqueness. And there are limitless ways that diversity can be expressed in the structure of open relationships. So some possibilities include swinging. And this is when the couple has sexual experiences with others together as a couple. Another one is openly dating, having sexual or having sexual relationships with others without a primary couple at the forefront. This can create more autonomy for the original couple. It remains ethical if it's discussed openly before dating a new person and having honest communications with the other people involved. Another is opening up a previously monogamous relationship with an agreement that a person can only have sexual relationships when traveling away from their hometown. Another could be an agreement that each partner must meet a new potential partner before having sex with them. And yet another is a couple decides that they want to be present during the sexual encounter between their primary partner and someone else. And the last way that I'll talk about diversity can show up in an open relationship structure is when it's agreed that each primary partner shares their full experience with the other primary partner afterwards. There's so many other ways too that it can show up. Decisions and agreements like these come from having initial and ongoing conversations amongst the people involved. It comes from honoring who you are while honoring your partner and designing your most ideal expression of what the open relationship can look like. Judgments are plentiful when talking about open relationships. The societal programming of sexual desire being sinful goes back a long way and still holds true in many current day religions. As a society, there's so much wounding around sexual fulfillment and desire. This is why the desire to explore ethically outside of a primary relationship is either suppressed or kept in secret. Other judgments that are imposed on people who choose ethically non-monogamous open relationships include shame around allowing your partner to sleep with someone else. The idea of having sexual relationships with more than one person is morally wrong. The belief that someone should find contentment having sex with just one person. And the belief that opening a relationship to other sexual experiences will lead to a breakup that it couldn't possibly work. Although this can be true when the relationship doesn't have a strong foundation, it can also be quite the opposite. It can bring the primary couple closer together because more of their needs are being met. According to a YouGov 2021 poll that asked 23,000 Americans about their opinions on non-monogamy and open relationships, 25% answered that they either have or would be interested in exploring one. 25%. But so many people don't feel safe exploring this due to all the judgments that they may face in doing so. I often wonder, how do we move from such judgment to compassion? Generally, I think one way is to embrace lessons that we can learn from a new thought or idea. 
now narrowing the focus to open relationships. Whether you feel like it is or is not something you would personally like to explore, there are still aspects of the structure that we can gain wisdom from and bring into whatever relationship structure we choose. An open relationship structure can teach us about developing a better way to communicate. The real life practice of communicating openly, honestly, and respectfully, honoring our partner's needs as well as our own needs, learning to accept desires that seem taboo, which opens the space to embrace new levels of self-acceptance and self-love. And hopefully, by understanding the different reasons why someone would choose this structure and inviting curiosity into something that may be completely different from anything you have known, you'll give the space to allow people to be themselves, to trust that people are choosing what they think is best for them by being okay with being against a new idea, but being for others as they express their unique selves. By allowing people to be uniquely them, you are also giving yourself the permission to be uniquely you, which will ultimately bring you the fulfilling life you desire. Stay tuned and stay curious. Thank you for listening to the Relationship Diversity Podcast. Want to learn more about relationship diversity? I've got a free guide I'd love to send you. Go to www.relationshipdiversitypodcast.com to get your sent right to you. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe to the podcast. You being here and participating in the conversation about relationship diversity is what helps us create a space of inclusivity and acceptance together. The more comfortable and normal it is to acknowledge the vast and varied relating we all do, the faster we'll shift to a paradigm of conscious, intentional, and diverse relationships. New episodes are released every Tuesday and Thursday. Stay connected with me through my website, carriejarislow.com, Instagram, and TikTok. Stay curious. Every relationship is as unique as you are. wondering why you never seem to find lasting fulfillment in your relationships? Or do you create the same kinds of relationship experiences over and over again? Can you never seem to find even one person who you want to explore a relationship with? Have you just given up hope altogether? If this sounds like you, my recent book, Why Do They Always Break Up With Me, is the perfect place to start. The foundation of any relationship, whether intimate or not, is the relationship we have with ourselves. In the book, I lead you through eight clear steps to start or continue your self-exploration journey. You'll learn about the importance of self-acceptance, gratitude, belief shifting, and forgiveness, and given exercises to experience these life-changing concepts. This is the process I use to shift my relationships from continual heartbreak to what they are now, fulfilling, soul-nourishing, compassionate, and loving. It is possible for you. This book can set you on a path to get there. Currently available through Amazon or through the link in the show notes.